Chairman, thank you so very much. And again, um, let me thank you for the cooperation that we have uh, promoted in this issue or on this issue of transportation security to the witnesses who are here. Let me thank you very much for your presence and take note of the fact uh, of members' schedules that were skewed somewhat because of the uh, long list of votes and uh, maybe delaying some members or, or cause some members to have uh, uh, some additional scheduling concerns. So let me just thank you again. Um, the chairman is right. We listened to Administrator Pistol and we now want to listen to the stakeholders. Rail workers, transit security professionals, pilots and flight attendants are just a few of the many professionals who find it within their job description uh, the responsibility of securing our nation's railways, uh, skies and pipelines against terrorist attack, including uh, chiefs of metropolitan rail systems. Uh, are all at the front lines. When we talk about security, we're really talking about people, and the critical question for me then is, are transportation workers in this country trained and equipped to recognize and mitigate a potential terrorist act? Let me say, just as I did in our first hearing on TSA authorization last month with Administrator Pistol, that we simply cannot forget the lessons learned from the past as we look to, uh, to preventing future terrorist attacks. I think the chairman and I agree that there are many tools. We happen to be uh, unified in our support on canines. Uh, canine is not present at the table today, so we won't ask any questions. But what we're saying is that we need tools, we need professional persons used to canines, we need persons who are professional who are used to finding uh, those threats uh, that will impact uh, the American people. As a Congress and as a nation, we have taken many steps to shore up the vulnerabilities and protocols and processes that enabled the 9-11 hijackers to penetrate the system and destroy thousands of lives. We've made great progress. We decided to move away from a system with various security companies operating checkpoint security to a federalized system of professional screeners who can quickly adapt to threats based upon the latest intelligence. We implemented mandatory screening for explosives, for check bags, and cargo on passenger planes. We directed that cockpit doors be strengthened and we deployed more air marshals to secure the aircraft cabin on high risk flights. Frankly, I am a supporter of increasing those air marshals on our flights uh, internationally. However, Mr. Chairman, our work is not done and to the witnesses, our work is not done. Just this year alone, there have been at least five incidences where a flight attendant has had to subdue a passenger to secure the aircraft cabin and I request to submit a list of these incidents for the record, Mr. Chairman. Uh, without objection. While these were not terrorist incidents, they reveal how important a layer of security the flight crews represent. In fact, in all of us who fly to work, as I tell my elementary school children as I visit our schools, when I tell them that I fly to work, depend upon those uh, frontline armored uh, but non-armored flight attendants along with uh, our pilots once those doors are closed. In the last Congress, when we passed our bipartisan TSA authorization bill, H.R. 2200, we recognized this and included provisions to improve TSA oversight of air carriers' basic security programs and directed that TSA work with the industry to implement accessible advanced security training for flight attendants. Let me be very clear. The airlines need to pay for flight attendant security training, and it needs to be part of their compensation package on the airlines uh, package, please recognize you have the hands of passengers, uh, you have the passengers in your hands. I continue to support uh, these concepts and continue not to understand opposition to improving aircraft cabin security as we reinforce the pilot door, as we provided for uh, pilots to carry arms if trained. Let us do something for our flight attendants. With a small investment in time and training, we can take the next step in aircraft cabin security by ensuring that the cabin crew are fully trained to meet today's very real threats. And let us not forget that when we are in the air, uh, when there are no air marshals on board, it is a flight crew that is the very last line of defense. Let's let them work together, our air marshals and flight attendants and our very able pilot force. I say again, nearly 10 years later, let us not forget the lessons learned from 9-11 as we look to addressing the persistent and evolving terrorist threat. Would we, in fact, be even having a discussion on crew training on September 12, uh, 2001? Uh, 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 For instance, how many lives were saved when crew and passengers foiled the hijackers on United Flight 93, uh, although, of course, they lost their lives, sending it into the ground in Pennsylvania at 580 miles per hour? sacrificing themselves instead of allowing the terrorists to kill thousands more. I simply say, let us not be penny wise and pound foolish when it comes to security. Regarding mass transit and pipeline security, I have introduced H.R. 1900, 
the Service Transportation Mass Security Act, which establishes the Service Transportation Inspection Office and the Service Transportation Advisory Committee for stakeholder consultation on securing programs. I look forward uh, to working with uh, the Chairman and his leadership on this issue. And I might say that H.R. 1900 also would increase the number of canine teams for transit security purposes. But wherever I go, canines come up as a viable tool to be utilized in security. Let's be creative. Let's move forward in training flight attendants, increasing professionalism, and using the tools that are helpful. Given the consistent threat to our transportation systems, as evidenced by information made public following the demise of bin Laden, we simply must bring our service transportation efforts in line with aviation, and I urge the majority to consider this bill and to be part of the overall TSA authorization. Finally, Mr. Chairman, I've requested a field hearing on pipeline security, uh, and I know that we're in discussion. I thank you very much for uh, your uh, interests, and I hope that we'll have one in Washington as well. Uh, this is a serious matter, and um, it uh, is reflected by recent incidences in Montana. I believe we can work together on issues of transportation, pipeline security, both aviation and rail, and all aspects of it. It is important to hear from the stakeholders who are here. Again, let me thank you so very much for being part of America's security, and let's overcome some of our disagreements and follow through on behalf of the American people in securing the homeland. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much.